In this video, I'm going to give an introduction to thermogravimetric analysis and look at the instrumentation used for TGA. Okay, so thermogravimetric analysis is an analytical technique used to study thermal events and thermal stability of materials, including polymers. And the changes in the mass of a specimen are measured while it's heated under a predetermined temperature profile and heating rate. So the basic principle of TGA is that we're measuring the mass change versus temperature. The instrumentation, uh, we need a sensitive balance with a sample pan inside a furnace uh, and we need to be able to control the temperature of the furnace accurately and we, we are able to uh, program the temperature profile that we want. We have facilities for controlling the atmosphere around the sample and also we have some electronic data processing so we can read the information into a computer. Applications include looking at the thermal stability of materials, kinetic studies, and we can also do qualitative and quantitative work using TGA. Limitations, we're limited to samples that undergo a mass change when they're heated, and also we can end up with some very complicated thermal traces that can be difficult to interpret. In terms of the instrumentation then, this is a schematic diagram of what's happening and here's a photograph of a TGA instrument. So we have a sample pan with a temperature sensor that's very close to this but not actually in the sample pan and then we have a balance here that's recording the mass of the sample and then we have the furnace or the heating block that's warming this up and we have a purge gas to carry away any gases that are coming off the sample. Okay, so in the photo this is the heating block here and this is the balance up above and there's a wire going down into here so that we can sit a, a sample pan inside this heating block. Okay, so typical temperature range is ambient to a thousand degrees although you can get specialist instruments that go to higher temperatures Typical heating rate is from 0 0.1 to 100 degrees per minute. Now, if you go too fast, you're going to smear your trace and you're not going to see the details. If you're going to go at 0 0.1 degrees per minute, it's going to take too long. So typically, you're going to set this at somewhere between 10 to 20 degrees per minute. But it really does depend on your method development and what you need to achieve in your experiment. The balance is typically from 1 to 100 milligrams that can be put in for the sample and we have a very good sensitivity so we can measure uh, small uh, changes in mass as low as 0 0.1 micrograms, so that's 10 to the minus 6 grams. The atmosphere we can control uh, depending on the gas that we flow through our instrument. So if we want something inert we could use N2 or argon. Or if you want something reactive, then maybe we could use O2, oxygen, or another gas. The pressure of the system is just atmospheric pressure, so there's no facility to control the pressure of the system. It's just atmospheric pressure. Then the sample pan, the volume tends to typically is between 40 to 500 microliters. Uh, we can use different materials and the sample pan is open to the atmosphere to allow any gases to escape that are, that are being evolved from our solid material. Temperature recording, uh, we're better than about 1 degree for accuracy, plus or minus 0.1 for precision. And as mentioned before, the sensor, the temperature sensor is close to the sample but not touching it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the, one reason, an important reason, is that if we have a metal thermocouple going inside our sample, then that metal could catalyse reactions and catalyse the decomposition of our material. And so it wouldn't be a true representation of the thermal decomposition. We would have uh, additional sort of problems. Uh, and it wouldn't be a true um, experiment because we'd, got, we'd have the metal from the temperature sensor potentially catalysing reactions. The other thing is that if the temperature sensor was actually inside the pan, it could be weighing down on that and it could cause problems with measuring the mass changes. Okay, so that's been an introduction to TGA and a look at some of the instrumentation details.